Okay, I just dug through <laughs> for an hour of miscellaneous miscellany of the more interesting materials I have here. I'm just gonna start out and just start working through it. <laughs> okay, so this is the London Magazine and Monthly Chronologer. And uh, this is dated 1745. And here on page 101, we have the marriage of Charles Morton, M.D. to Miss Berkeley. That is the only arm's length marriage record that I have, of, besides the entry in the IGI. Um, arm's length meaning that London Magazine back in, so even Charles Morton back in 1745 wouldn't have any reason to make up. <laughs> the fact that he married <laughs> uh, Mary Berkeley here um, that between that and the IGI there's there's a corroboration that couldn't be a mistake this is something called the present state of Great Britain dated 1755 and I think that that list that I was um, About the family hospital, like that was from Google Books. It isn't as good of a scan. Um, is uh, this is another form of it? Now, this is the list of the Royal Society in 1755, and see, there's a lot of people there in the Royal Society. And of course, somewhere here I have names highlighted. And let's see, we have an Edward Wortley Montague that was the husband of uh, Miss Montague, who's the lady of the blue stockings, Charles Morton. Uh, eventually moved in with. We have a James Earl of Morton. We have a Charles Pratt. And a George Savile. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> They all, they're all together where they should be, shouldn't they? Yeah. Although George Savile wasn't supposed to have got along with them. Um, <coughs> this is a list of basically various documents about Charles Morton. They're in the British National Archives. Um, some letters to Thomas Birch, his official diaries. I'd love to see that. These are only, you know, hmm. I found this very interesting here. Mr. Joseph Morton of Tottenham, Charles Morton, brother of the above, leased by Joseph Morton of the uh, east side of Tottenham Higher. I don't know where that is. Could that be something to do with, uh, who is it, um, <sighs> Claremont? I know the paper's in here. Well, here is a letter from Lady Vere to, about Dr. Morton to Assistant Dr. Connor, saying he would have a good choice of the hospital. And there's the draft letter recommending <coughs> recommending him to the hospital. There's a bundle of letters concerning desire of Dr. Morton to publish a manuscript relating to Parliament in Carew's possession, and that was bolstered in the Vox Journal. And that's upon the King's writ. This little abstract of what's in the archive, I don't know exactly what the dates are. Um, this, this is in amongst the um, Crocombe Court manuscripts in Somerset, I guess, or Carew family and business correspondence. Not Rod Carew, the baseball player, but um, Carew family had some remote connection to Chichester's, and they were in Devonshire. This is just some kind of 
guy writing the British critic offhand mentions uh, is mentioned to note that Dr. Morton of the British Museum, a diligent student of Aristotle, first informed Dr. Gillies of the coincidence of the judgment with that of Petit. I don't know enough about those people to really say. Now here is a chat, here's a little uh, publication in something called the 19th century where someone was promised by Miss Claremont, whose parents were never identified. She had some connection to Italy, perhaps. And Mary Shelley, you know, she had some relationship. This person uh, lived in the household of Mary Shelley and was related somehow to Fanny Gould or lived in the household of Fanny Gould, but no one knew, knew who her father was. And she never really revealed it. And this person was interviewed her to find out who that was and the poet Byron would um, Byron <laughs> the Byron you're thinking about uh, wrote poems that alluded to her I think here may be Murray Pratt uh, Lady Savile's um, birth record have to, I'd have to check down if you make her for stuff probably his name was John, but at one point I thought it was John. And this would be at the registers of Bothell with Hedburn County, Northumberland. The Pratts went to Ireland. They got some land, but they weren't Irish. They were English. So there are, there is a monument in Vox Hall about the Pratts, and it, it states that they went to Ireland to help the country. At one point, they first were from wherever Vox Hall is. I think I'm getting that right. Now, here is some... There's, there's, some, there's some strange connections. Um, you see, Lady, Hall Lady Halifax would correspond with... Um, Lady Veer and Lady Mont and uh, Lady Wortley, and with Dean Swift. Yes, the guy that Jonathan Swift. And Jonathan Swift was somehow related to the Pratts, and and he would correspond with Mary Pratt. And there's all sorts of things like that going on. And just Doctor Morton just kind of seems to be, well, here, there, and kind of around it, kind of surrounded by it, but never really deeply buried in it. Here is something I found very interesting. This is the location of an archive of, <laughs> you're going to find this very interesting if you're, if you're watching from Britain. This is the Proceedings of the Royish, Royal Irish Academy, it's Dublin, Volume 5, uh, one, uh, 1853. But this was published in 1853, but this is a, put into print form. Um, Something a meeting they had on May 12, 1851. You're gonna find this very interesting. John Alistair, LD, the vice president and the chair. Special thanks to the Academy were given to Pierce Morton Esquire, that is Charles Cormorton's son, for his donation of an old manuscript copy of the Doomsday Book in seven volumes folio, formerly the property of Dr. Charles Morton. Very, very interesting. If those are, if those things have disappeared, no one knows where they are. You may want to look or ask the Royal, Royal Irish Academy if they got some old dusty copy sitting around somewhere. Because <laughs> I'm not quite sure that was possession of Dr. Charles Morton's. It may have been of the museums. Well, here are some letters of uh, Dean Swift. Here's a Miss Pratt to Mr. Swift. And that is, um, well, a problem I have here, though. I mean, 1733, uh, Miss Pratt would have been Lady Savile at the time. She married in 1720, so I don't know which Miss Pratt. Honoretta Pratt. This is Mary Savile's mother. Mary Savile's mother. Uh, that's who that is. Honoretta Brooks Pratt. I will tell you that with absolute authority. Um, I figured that out. Um, and she's just writing about 
uh, the poet Pope, who has a big monument in Twickenham. Hmm. Very weird things. Um, here's, uh, again, Miss Pratt, Dean Swift. <coughs> you know me sufficiently not to doubt a letter of my way coming you being acceptable there for my mission. Cannot fail of an excuse for me whose friendship is pleasingly gratified with honor. Your kind inquiry of myself only justify taking up. Here, okay, let me tell you which publication this is. You want to this is this is in the this is on Google Books again. Letters written by Jonathan Swift, Dean of St. Patrick's, Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe all the really cool connected people live not in. Not only lived in, in Ireland, uh, had a state in Ireland, but lived in Twickenham, and they knew um, Lee Wortley Montague, and they knew Pope, and they knew um, uh, the, had some spurious relationship with the author of Frankenstein, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but there you go. <laughs> yes, my eyes are raised, and yes, I have. I'm not just pulling this out of my butt. You can look through. I've got. You can look through books about. Letters of Jonathan Swift. Letters written by Lady War uh, Montague. There's one small snippet in there when she corresponds with Charles Morton. It seems like he's always in the background, but everybody he's surrounded by, everybody he knows, is all interacting in this big cast of absolutely famous people. Okay, so here is Honora, otherwise Honora Pratt, and this is her will, by the way, from the National Archives. And all of these people that, that are mentioned, that I have highlights, are, are people that she's actually um, related to. Um, uh, believe it or not, so there's there's an honor that Jenkins seemed to be the main uh, beneficiary, but not too much. And all of these people, even though they don't have the last name uh, Brooks, well, they all ended up marrying some. You know, Honoretta Brooks Pratt lived a very long time and lived to see most of her family die. And so she lived to see a lot of her grand, her brothers and sisters, children and grandchildren. And here we are, Lord and uh, Lady Scarborough, and it happens to be Charles Morton's um, grandson, I think. That's after, um, must have been after um, Arab. Bella Savile married Scarborough. Yeah, so, um, Mary Pratt, Lady Savile, is the daughter of this woman whose will I looked over. Um, and there's a there's a there's a few gentlemen's magazines or um, notes and queries uh, publications about her that suggest that she was such a nice and loving individual that anybody she met and and was pleased to know what her life she just gave a hundred pounds to because she was that way. No, it's because she lived a very, very long time in relationship to the rest of her family. She had a lot of brothers and sisters and she had a lot <coughs> of relatives. <coughs> now here's something I found interesting was never able to follow up on. This is from Monk's Roll and there was another Charles Morton native Devonshire. Um, uh, 23 uh, was on 15th of January 1683 also admitted on the Physic line in Leiden uh, he died in January 1731 I haven't seen any information about his death no will I couldn't find a will so here's an adequate review 1794 now this I found very interesting <laughs> yeah this is the one okay first thing you're going to notice look down there Signed E. Morton. Am I getting this? Let me get my camera. Yeah, there we go. Getting that. Okay, now there's some stink that happened. I don't know what the hell happened. I still, by reading this, I don't know what the hell happened. There's some innuendo about some manuscript in the, in the museum which the pages were ripped out in, in some course of whatever. And this is... And Mr. Disraeli uh, is actually uh, Benjamin Disraeli is pursuing this matter with 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 a lot of. of you know, I'll just read this thing. Okay, so he wrote this to the analytical reviewers. And this is from January '94. This is five years before he died. 
Gentlemen, a son of Levi in the name of...